Michael Cohen, President Trump's former personal lawyer and fixer, pleaded guilty to eight federal charges involving $1.4 million of tax evasion. But that wasn't all. Mr. Cohen pleaded guilty to two campaign finance charges. What he did was he worked to pay money to silence two women who had information that he believed would be detrimental to the 2016 campaign and to the candidate and the campaign. It was a stunningly direct admission, given that Cohen and the president previously told several conflicting stories about these payments. Did you know about the $130,000 payment to Tony Daniels? First, Trump said he didn't know anything about his lawyer, Michael Cohen, paying off Stormy Daniels. But then the story changed. Michael would represent me and represent me on some things. He represents me like with this uh, crazy Stormy Daniels deal. He represented me. And Rudy Giuliani changed that story again. Having, having, having something to do with paying some Stormy Daniels woman 130000 I mean, which is going to turn out to be perfectly legal. See, the crux of the Stormy Daniels scandal was never the alleged extramarital sex between a porn star and the president. It was the money. Congress passed a series of campaign finance and ethics laws in the 1970s, prompted by Watergate and Nixon's resignation. The intent was threefold to prevent corruption, to make government open and transparent, and to limit influence from special interests. And it was these laws that were violated when, in late October 2016, Cohen delivered $130,000 of hush money to Stephanie Clifford, better known as Stormy Daniels. Campaign finance laws limit contributions and require candidates report them to the Federal Election Commission. But this money was never properly reported. Cohen originally argued that he didn't need to report it because it was not a campaign contribution. But from the beginning, it was hard to argue that the money wasn't, on some level, being used to influence the outcome of the election. For one, the timing of the payment is extremely relevant. It came just weeks before the general election and right on the heels of perhaps the Trump campaign's biggest scandal. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. At the time, campaign finance experts said that the timing raised questions and that it strongly suggests it was related to the election. Cohen also negotiated the payment using his Trump business email, another campaign finance violation. Cohen already pleaded guilty, but what does this actually mean for Trump? Well, first, it's worth noting that sadly, the Trump campaign's failure to disclose isn't unique. More than one-third of candidates running in primaries on June 5th of 2018 didn't file on time or make public their financial disclosures. So, while a formal complaint was filed in January 2018, the FEC is both notoriously slow and historically gridlocked when it comes to acting on such cases. According to one analysis by the Center for Public Integrity, it is very likely that the FEC won't rule on the complaint until after the 2020 presidential election. So it's possible Trump wouldn't even be president by the time they make their call. The most likely end result, if one was ever reached that found Trump's campaign at fault, is a fine. And fine amounts are only small fractions of what campaigns spend in elections. In 2016, when Trump ran, the average fine was about $20,000. By comparison, Trump spent $322 million on his campaign. And politicians regularly just ignore these fines. They face very few consequences. The FEC has failed to collect $1.3 million in fines from more than 160 candidates or committees. In fact, campaign finance violations are far more likely to be enforced through criminal investigations, like the one that centered on and ultimately felled Cohen. That may be the reason that Trump and his lawyers have been so cavalier about this scandal. But now that Cohen, who once said he'd take a bullet for Trump, has pleaded guilty, that attitude may change. Cohen is likely going to jail for these crimes, but the biggest unanswered question is whether the president is also accountable for them. Just after the guilty plea was announced, Cohen's lawyer took to Twitter, writing, he testified under oath that Donald Trump directed him to commit a crime. If those payments were a crime for Michael Cohen, then why wouldn't they be a crime for Donald Trump? 